Hi everyone, we'll just wait a few moments for everybody to join. Oh wow, that was uh that's worked rather well. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think this is probably the, the, the quickest that we've spoken on spaces for a little while because of the, the technical issues, but I'm very happy. <laughs> How wonderful we have no tech issues. Yes. Yay, touch wood. <laughs> touch wood, yeah. I am going to request on Gem, or I can accept myself on Gem Crypto just in case. Yeah. Um, so how are you today? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. Very good. A bit, yes. a bit tired. I've had a very long day. I've, um, oh, let me turn my other one off. Oh, what's that? Sorry, it's because I connected my Gem Crypto one. Um, can you hear me okay now? Yeah, fine, darling. Perfect. Yeah, I've had um, a busy day. I've been in a car for sort of five hours and um, had a meeting and, yeah, just walked in the door, but excited for tonight. Yeah, yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, you must be tired. You had a long drive, didn't you? But um, And I went to the gym twice by accident, so we're both a bit tired. <laughs> Oh my goodness, bless you. <laughs> oh, hi everybody. Hi, oh, some of our regulars here. Hi, Kipo, Estival. Oh, hi, hi, Raven. Oh, nice that you're here. Um, we'll wait a couple of seconds. We'll see if anyone else joins. Um, and then we'll see what happens. Yeah, so the subject today, we're going to talk about being present, we said, didn't we? So um, yeah, did we? Was it presence? No, a, a car, a, a peaceful mind. Oh, sugar, a peaceful mind. Sorry, I'm I'm still a bit all over the place. I'm just <laughs> presence was last week, darling, when you couldn't talk because you're tech with you. Oh my lord! Well, here we all are. I'll just share. Um, I'll just share the uh, the space and and welcome and thank you for all being here. Um, most of you know what we do by now. Um. Moles has been teaching the three principles for quite a long time and I've been on the journey with her for the last few years. It's changed my life massively and hers. So we thought, what better way than to sort of help the community? And so that's what we do every week now. We've got our Telegram group and we try and have a, a different subject every week. Um, Moles, I always love it when you give a sort of an overview and explain exactly what it is that we do and why it's why it's so different. So that would be lovely. Okay, darling, thank, thank you. you. I mean, we've gone quite a lot into detail about the three principles in the other spaces, but I guess the main thing to look at is that for anyone that hasn't heard about them or doesn't know anything about them, that rather than look at the content of the mind we're always going to look at the context of the mind rather than going into the details of what the mind is saying um the stories it makes up the gaps that it fills um a lot of the the bullshit really that you know the mind is constantly whirling and 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 creating movies that we believe and creating stories that we believe that just aren't true and, you know, while I haven't, got, I haven't got anything against other therapies, a lot of that looks at those movies as if they are true and tries to solve them. And, and we're going a bit deeper here. What we're, what we're doing here is we're actually saying that, you know, what your mind thinks isn't truth. You know, what your mind thinks, it's like a radio station that's constantly have got radio waves of thought coming through. And that thought will create your experience. And that experience can look like lots of different things. So when we begin to step back and go a bit deeper, we start to create almost like a space for us to observe our own thinking rather than being really caught up in it. So for me, before I understood the principles, I never really looked at what thought was. I was always really wrapped up in what my mind was saying um, and, and sometimes really caught up in it and still occasionally can be. But now there's this space where I reset really quickly. What happens is that I suddenly remember that actually what thought is telling me is, is probably not really helpful, especially if I'm not feeling great. And, and, and I suddenly remember that I'm experiencing my thinking and not the world. And that creates a space for me to observe myself. That creates a space for me to observe my thinking and find peace. And ultimately, 
what this space is is about tonight is having that peace of mind and understanding what it is. So peace of mind doesn't necessarily mean a quiet mind. Okay, this is quite interesting. Peace of mind is actually being able to observe our mind even when it's going crazy. So I can sometimes have a crazy mind and be caught up in it and not feel peaceful. Sometimes my mind can really be kind of active and I can really be overthinking but if I'm in the space where I can observe that it's not really affecting me I can just see my mind and 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 kind of say to myself look you know what's going on here you know it's thought creating feeling and I can detach and I can just experience my life in the moment so what we don't want is a set of requirements for us to be okay because what that does that creates for the mind Um, almost like a carrot and a stick. So if I have a set of requirements for my mind to be peaceful, if I haven't got those requirements, I'm always going to have a a mind that is not at ease. If I can see that there's no requirements in my life for me to to have a peaceful mind, what can happen is I can understand that a peaceful mind can come through me at any moment, regardless of what's going on in my mind, what's going on in my life. My life could be in turmoil, but suddenly I could find a deep peace of mind because I understand that it isn't the world creating it. So so we're going from an, from an understanding of the world before the principles that looks like it's outside in, that looks like it's always the world creating our experience. You know, it's all, it's the people, it's the things, it's the relationships, it's the finances, it's the work, it's that, it looks like it's that, that, that's what's causing my problems, that's what's causing my bad feeling. When we come into the principles, what starts to happen is we start to see that differently. We start to see, well, all I'm ever experiencing is my own thinking. So if we go a bit deeper into what that looks like, so thought, feeling are two sides of a coin. What you are thinking in the moment is what you are feeling in the moment, full stop. Whatever else it looks like, it isn't. It's thought feeling, okay? So when we begin to see that, the world doesn't quite have the grip on us that it used to. So all the things that I said that it looked like before and from an outside-in perspective, suddenly we go a bit deeper into an inside-out perspective. Suddenly we come to a space where we see that our thought feeling is coming from us And we're always projecting that onto the world. And I do say this a lot. It's very, very important to see that your state of mind is creating your experience. It isn't your experience creating your state of mind. That can be quite tricky to see at first. But I can tell you it's 100% true. Even when you begin to see it's true, you're still going to be caught up in the outside in. I'm still going to have moments where, or days or, or weeks where it looks still looks like the world is creating your experience and you can feel really, um, you, can feel, you can feel sad, you can feel angry. But once you understand this, there will be a point where the, 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 the realisation comes, the light switches on and you suddenly see that your experience is coming from you, that you are making it all up. And we can all have an idea of this really even before the principles when we observe that we've had experiences where very similar experiences where sometimes we've been okay with it and sometimes we've not so what does that say to you so is that saying that it's the world creating it well it can't be because if the world created feeling we would all react to the world in the same way and we don't we would all react to the things in the world in the same way and we don't Our experience can only ever come from us. And why it's so important to teach this is we're living in a really, really crazy world. You know, we always have been, but it's been especially crazy the last couple of years. And and for us to begin to see that we can be okay no matter what is incredibly important because what's happened in the last two years, I mean, we were in a mental health epidemic before the, 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 what this COVID bullshit came along. Suddenly that's come along and the, the, the mental health epidemic has gone through the roof. So now we've got something that's affecting even more people and people are lost. They don't know where to turn. So so what Gem and I decided to do, and, and, and obviously I, I've helped Gem with this and, and, and she's a great advocate for, 
for what we teach and for the principles. So, so we, we just got together and we said, how can we help people? We don't want to charge them money. We don't want it to be about a project as in a, a financial project. We want this to be about the people. And, and very organically, we came to these spaces and we believe that this will develop more into other things. But, but what it was really about is we know how important this message is, especially in this time on this planet. And I think that we got together and we realised that in some way we had to get this to as many people as possible. So when we realised that actually we've got quite a few followers between us and, and we can we can just start doing it. And it doesn't matter if one person listens or if three people listen. If, if we're touching people and changing their lives, even if that's a couple of people a week, that's enough. And we know that from this, things will grow and we'll, we'll get a bigger audience, hopefully, and we'll be able to help more people. So it's really a passion project. It's very, very important to us. And I, I think that, again, it, it's that understanding the self is freedom. You know, we we, beca- we can become so habitual and, re- and re- habitual and repetitive in our in our natures, in our in our thinking, in our habits, in, in, in our lives, because we haven't challenged our own thinking. So not only is this really, really important for our mental health and our well-being, because what we get to do is find that peace of mind that was kind of elusive in many ways. Um, we also get to challenge who we think we are. You know, we can, we, we can be really stuck without realising we're stuck. And, you know, for me too, still... I can be stuck without realise I'm realizing I am, but as soon as I observe that behaviour, as soon as I see myself, as soon as I challenge my own thinking, because out of my thinking um, my beliefs are born. So if I go back to the root of my thoughts then and challenge my beliefs, then my world can change. And for me that again it's so important for us to evolve. We shouldn't stay the same. We should we should evolve. We should challenge ourselves so again it's it, there's so many levels there's so many layers of these principles how of what areas these principles touch it isn't just one area it isn't going to be just one area of your life it just it isn't just going to be one area of the self because there's so many levels to see it on because the principles are everything so when we talk about the principles we're talking about the energies Um, behind life the energies that create all things one of the easiest one of the principles to talk about is thoughts we do talk about that a lot on these calls but the other one is consciousness which is our awareness and that's the part where we go deeper and we begin to see who we are we begin to create that space when we when we become aware that we're awareness we, we suddenly get a depth of understanding. And, and the other principle, there's three principles, is the, the, the uh, principle of mind. And that is the energy build things. That's the, the creative energy of life. You know, um, the, you know if, you're, if you can look at it as the, the power behind nature. If you're religious, you would look at it as God. If you were into spirituality, you might look at it as the force or, you know, the, um, the universal energy. It's, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you call it. Again, we don't need labels, but we know that there is some energy. We can feel it in ourselves. We can feel it in life. Um, So, yeah, it's it's really interesting to begin to explore this. We just we just scratch the surface of it a little bit and then suddenly we can get an interest and we begin to inquire, you know, and, 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 and it's an inquiry that can really lead to a real new understanding of life and a real new understanding of who we are. And and, and as I said at the beginning, so it's not about the story of who you think you are. Now I will go into that with clients because again, we want to pick it apart. We want to see that it's not true, but it isn't diving into it as if it's reality because actually the only reality you have is this moment right now that you're in. No, no other reality exists apart from this. If I was to take you even deeper into the principles, we'd show you that even this isn't a reality, but for the sake of our experience and our human experience, it's a reality. It's how the world appears to us. It's how the moment appears to us. So if you begin to see that, that the only truth is now, then when... <sighs> How do I explain? So then when you have 
this experience of the mind creating a traumatic event from the past and you feeling that, instead of it being about the past, you begin to see it differently. You begin to see that, ah, that is my mind creating in the moment a memory of the past. Isn't true now. We can't go there. It's thought in the moment. And if that memory of the past has a traumatic feeling with it that feeling is coming in the moment so so it's the same with the future it's it's the mind will create a, something in the future maybe that you don't want to happen and you can get that feeling in your belly like oh I, I, you know that scares me I don't want that what the both of those things what are they they're thought in the moment creating feeling the only thing that is happening in that moment is your mind is creating a story which is creating a feeling in your body. But it's so clever, it's so compelling that it actually makes it look like the past. It actually makes it look like a real future. The only truth is that you're in the moment. So again, it, where's peace of mind in that? Peace of mind in that is seeing that. Peace of mind is that space of awareness where suddenly you go, oh, that's what I'm doing. I'm taking myself away from the now, from presence, and I'm taking myself into an imagined future or past or an imagined problem, and I'm creating a feeling that is causing me causing me to feel unhappy, causing disharmony within me. So we're still going to do that. I still do that. Jem still does that. But we tend to do it a lot less and we tend to bounce back very quickly when we do it. It's like a reset button. And one of the things I love is that it allows me to not take myself too seriously. You know, in the moment when I'm in it, I do. But when I come out of it, I'm not. And I know with Jem, she feels the same. It, it, it allows us to not take others too seriously. It's... If someone in my life is caught up and, and and it looks like they're stressed out, maybe they're projecting that onto me, it, it's not personal. It's not personal. It's where they are in their mind that's creating that. And so you can kind of see that and you see that they're in their reality and you're in yours and it doesn't have to affect you. And you can actually have real compassion for people that are feeling really lost and really unhappy and really sad. You know, because and even if they're angry at you, you can have compassion for that, too, because you understand that we all go there. We all have different states of mind throughout our, our days and weeks and months and years. And and when we see that that state of mind is what we project onto the world, when we're feeling great, we're not going to cause problems for people. We're going to be in a good state of mind where, you know, life is good. Like That's where we all strive to be, really. I mean. Everybody wants to be in that happy state. Life, unfortunately, contains all the states, so we will have a lower state of mind. In that lower state of mind, when the world looks really, really heavy, when we feel contracted, when we feel upset, when we feel there's something that we want that we can't get, whatever it may be, that contraction comes in. And that's when we're shitty to people. That's when we project it onto the world. And... So if you understand the, the, the nature of this system that I'm teaching and someone in your life is, is doing that, you actually just feel sorry for them. You don't, whatever they're projecting onto you, you don't get so caught up in. You tend to go, okay, that, oh, that's a really tough place to be. You know, it's tough to be in the low state of mind. Like we can really have an understanding and a, a deeper understanding of that and be really compassionate towards that person instead of reacting to them and then create an even a, a, a much bigger problem. So again, it, it's not only that it creates a peace of mind that comes from us, it makes life easier because we understand we're all suffering from the same thing and we're all suffering from the human condition. And the human condition is that we are, we are, we are experiencing our thought feelings that sometimes look real. And we're experiencing, experiencing a state of mind that sometimes can be really dark. You know, it can be dark. It can be sad. It can be lonely. It can be all of the things that we, we'd, we'd probably choose not to feel. But 
what we do feel and and as far as I can see the more I do this work the more I see that we're probably meant to feel that way too we're meant to get upset we're meant to feel sad we're meant to have moments of anger we're meant to have moments of being lost it's all part of the human experience so when I say we're suffering from the human condition it's not that that condition is something that is a mistake the human condition is something that we're here to have because we've been born as a human. So as far as I can see, that that's perfect. It's just that we have such ideas about how we're supposed to feel that we resist that. And I think we've spoken about that last week, a lot about how the resistance and, 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 and the saying, I shouldn't feel like this, I shouldn't be in this experience, this shouldn't be happening, happening to me, creates even more problems, creates even even more distress and suffering. So the a quieter mind doesn't necessarily mean a quiet mind. You know, it, it's really interesting. It, it's my idea of a quiet mind was I had to, a, a quieter mind was it had to be quiet. It had to have no noise. It had to have no content. Now, what I understand from the principles is my mind will always have content. It's always going to have thoughts coming through. And sometimes those thoughts will be very, very quick and and very apparent and very seem very real. And other times they will seem less real and they'll be calmer. And th- th- both of those states, there's not a right or wrong. All of that, again, is part of being human. So a quieter mind is actually us understanding more deeply what the mind is what it does, how it works, who we are. So this is the exploration. This is the inquiry that we go on in the three principles. We begin to explore that and we explore it with a sense, hopefully, of wonder. Of like, oh, I wonder what I can see when I look at life in this way. I wonder what can be different when I look at life in this way. what, What changes? I have changed so much in the last eight years, I was I was so incredibly defensive, I, th- I feel, before I found the principles. There was something in me that I felt I had to defend, which is no longer there. Um, and maybe in moments, but, but not really. I really allow myself to be vulnerable. I really allow myself to experience life. I, I'm not scared to tell people my feelings, my thoughts. It's it's, it's like I show up as I am. I had a teacher, actually, and he said, the principles of the come as you are party, because there's such a lack of judgment when you understand this, because what you see is everybody is where they are, where they're supposed to be. But if they if they take your hand and they go on this journey with you, then they're going to see it so much, so much differently. They're going to their their horizons will expand. Life will become lighter and 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 Jen will say this too. It's like it, it's so the the totality of of the experience of what you see is what kind of blows your mind when you begin to see it. Because you may come into the principles because maybe you're unhappy or there's one area of your life that you would like to change. But what you see is when you really do the work and you really explore them, that how much changes, how how much of the landscape looks different. You know, it, it, it's, and, and me, you know, for those that have seen it, I know you get it. For those that haven't, I suppose a really nice explanation is like me talking about it. You'll get a bit of an understanding of it. Um, but when you see it for yourself, it's a, it's, it's a different ball game. There's something from within that you begin to see it that opens it up and it's like, wow. So it, a, a lovely way of looking at it is like if you had a guidebook to, so you had a, you'd never been to Paris, but you had a guidebook for Paris. You would read the guidebook. You'd have a kind of understanding of what Paris was like and where you wanted to go. But being in Paris would be a whole different thing. You know, Paris, the experience of actually being there would be completely different from reading the guidebook. And I suppose the conversations of the guidebook, but they also lead to the feeling of the insights and the experience of seeing it for yourself. So this isn't an understanding where I want you to get it from your mind, although that can be helpful to understand it a little from your mind. But 
it's actually an understanding that goes much deeper. It's an understanding that when you see it from within, it's it's insight, sight from within. It's a light bulb moment. It's those it's those moments of where you sit there and you've the expansion comes in, the the light comes in. And and it, it you know, there's three reactions. I always get like when people do see it, there tends to be quite an extreme reaction. Um they will swear, um, they will laugh or they will cry. And I do courses, um, online courses and You'll see it in the course. It's like every week someone will have some experience. One will cry. One will one will one will really start really laughing. There's just something that when you see it, it's so profound. You have to almost express it through some kind of reaction. And so that's what I'm talking about here. It's great to to listen, but if you stay in the conversation, you will see something very deeply for yourself that will really really begin to change. And for some people, um, my experience was I have very huge insights that blow my mind and, 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 and I don't have them very often. And other people have quite small insights that are quite incremental. And, 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 and we all get to the same place and we're all seeing what we're meant to see. But again, it's like there isn't, again, even with insights, it's not set. You will see what you see when you are meant to see it. And just to be open to the exploration, just to have that inquisitive mind to say that, okay, you know, I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I'm not going to just believe you. I'm going to try and see it for myself. That's all you need to do. There are no exercises to do. Um, it, it's not about meditation. If you want to meditate, that's fine, but this isn't what this is about. It's, it's about coming away from a human that is doing to coming back to the more the truth of who we are to a human that is creating and experiencing. Okay, so so when we when we go back to that, when we when we touch that, it, it, again it it's a lightness comes in. I don't there's there's nothing for you to do but listen. Okay, you can listen to me. You can read books. You can work with the Three Principles Coach. Um, I, I love non-duality as well. I think that kind of leads to the same place. Um, if you don't know what that is, look that up or message me and I'll, and I'll, and I'll chat with you about it. Um, but, yeah, it, it's it's ultimately it's coming home to who you really were, who you really are, before the thoughts of who you think you are, before the identity that you've made up about yourself. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a really beautiful exploration if you come on it with me. I mean, I, I, I can't think of anything that I have that is richer in my life other than maybe my son, um, that gives me a richness of feeling and experience. I think that the, the, the richness, it, it, it's, you really are, you're touching the space of love, you know, you're touching the space of truth, you're, you're letting go of, of, of so much unhelpful thinking, old beliefs that aren't necessary. You know, we, we can get, again, as I said earlier, we can really get caught up and think that who we think we are is true, but all we are is, 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 is thoughts that we've believed. Like, that's so interesting to me. Who I am is a character made of thoughts that I've believed to be true. So what that does, that allows me to challenge that thinking, observe that thinking. So that can dissolve and and different parts of me will fall away that maybe were unhelpful and a new thinking will come in and create more, a, a, a more helpful character, a more char- a character that's more at peace. Um, yeah, it's, you know, Anything that you believe to be true probably isn't. (laughs) And that can be challenging for the ego and the mind. But boy, does it open up the world when you really look at it, when you really throw yourself into it. So I've been talking for half an hour again. So I'm going to ask Jem to come in. (laughs) Oh, it was was lovely and so much to unpack. And so many things stuck out to me. one thing it reminded me of um, Mark Twain's quote where he said I've been through so some terrible things in my life some of which actually happened and isn't 
is just when I look back and I think of how I was sort of dealing with things previously, when I think about it logically, how the hell was I so strong in certain areas of my life and so pathetic in others? That was just because I believed I couldn't be strong in those areas. And, you know, I sort of was like, it didn't, didn't not go into it, but I was like, well, that's just something that doesn't work for me. But logically, that was just me kind of just being playing the sort of victim mentality. What you were saying about being open and vulnerable, I do that with everything now. I think before I was, I was sort of, because I'd been hurt and I was maybe a bit scared, I was in sort of protection mode. So I was happy to a certain extent, but I was always sort of not fully able or wanting to give myself to everything. And now I know... It just makes everything so much easier because I know it. God, I'm going to find this really hard to to explain. Um, Kind of like I was driving today and I knew where I needed to go. It was a two and a half hour drive. And I knew that we were doing the space on quieting the mind. So I was, you know, when you're driving to actually drive the car, can sometimes be quite rare because you're always thinking about what's going on or this, this, this and this. But I, I made a real effort to just be driving the car and just thinking about exactly what I was doing, sort of taking in everything. And I thought to myself, well, if life really is about um, the path of least, least resistance, you know, this is our experience. We, Whatever feelings or thoughts we have, that's OK. And I thought, well, I wouldn't go via scotland to where i need to go today that would take me an extra however many hours and i thought in my mind it's kind of similar there's a i can put all this fluff and all these excuses of why something's not right for me but it's bullshit and the and i i realized that with the things that i was struggling with and now in every part of my life it's like wow okay it's all bullshit any any excuse i've made it's because I think I'm scared, which is is not true. And it's when the when the penny finally dropped, um, yeah, I still get caught up, but it doesn't take very long. It, and it's just it's just so brilliant. And I don't know if I've explained that the right way, but it's it took me quite a long time, didn't it, Miles? And you know, there were tears. There were you know me not answering the phone because I was like, God, is this happening? And it's just a process that I never thought I would get to this point. I was I was at the point when we first started properly working together that I was almost scared of my own thinking. I was like, oh, God, how am I going to fix this? But there's nothing to fix, and that's the, the beauty of the, the whole the whole thing. So, yeah, that's that's what I got from that. But am I right in saying that just being in the moment and being in this experience is the least path of resistance because you're just allowing absolutely perfect and you did explain it really well and um thank you for that and and yeah the path of least resistance is a beautiful way to put it that we're just going with what's what's appearing and the funny thing with Jem, she doesn't mind me saying it's like she cancelled appointments with me for the probably the first year at least (laughs) every time we had an appointment Oh, she's like, oh, I can't make it. <laughs> and, and what's so interesting about that is is that the ego doesn't want to go to those places that we go to in this call. So you will get a lot of people that are very resistant resistant to this understanding because, you know, the ego wants to dominate. The ego doesn't want to, to be dissolved. And although we don't ever get totally get rid of the ego, a lot of it is dissolved during this um, during the inquiry into this understanding. An insight will dissolve a layer of thinking that is unhelpful. Um, that unhelpful thinking is is coming from your ego. Um, and what you said, what I loved was that that, and we've talked about this on on my other courses, my online courses, is that that area that you want to protect. Oh, if you go there, like what you see, the juice you get out of going to that area is beyond anything that you you that you can gain from going to the area that you think you want to go to. So when I get come, someone come to me and they want to look at something around their life and then I notice there's an area that they're really protecting, I know when we hit that bit, 
that's when they're going to really see stuff because the, the the protection it's 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 for me you know the uh, the saying life begins where your where your comfort zone ends that that to me is about this that to me is about that that place where you feel discomfort in exploring in challenging is where you're going to really see something is where you're going to really change is where you're really going to evolve and if if you can go there if you can look at that and be really honest and say, God, yeah, that's a really sticky area for me. Like, I'm really shine the light on it and really begin to dissolve it and see what it is. It's such a powerful thing to do. Um, it, it really does open us up. It really does create this kind of transformation within us. And I think with Jem, where we were getting sometimes to those places, it would just be cancel. Cancel, 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 and 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 she's not alone. That that happens to many, many people. Um, and it, it, it's there's a bravery, there's a bravery in saying that this world is different to what I thought it was. This my my experience is different to what I thought it was. That oh, I'm not a victim. There's a real bravery in standing up and owning everything in your life. And 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 that's what I see in this. It's like the people that work with me are brave souls. They are actually standing up and saying, "Okay, I'm willing to challenge who I think I am. I'm willing to challenge what what the world has taught me about it, and see that it's not true. To see that that it's it's not. I don't need all these things. It isn't the world creating my experience and my feeling. That it's coming from me. It's like night and day." And, and and it's incre it's really it's it's so enriching, but it, you know, it is challenging at first. I won't deny that. And and to Jem and to anyone on this call that's done some work with me, like oh wow, brave, thank you. You know, it, it it's not for the faint hearted, and and you can you know you you can hit some some things that you thought were true that oh what's the saying, the truth. Um, First, it will piss you off, then it will set you free. <laughs> and I see that with people. It's like, really? Um, but once you get through that, there's such a lightness. There's such a lightness of being. There's such a love of life. Before I found this, I was in a dark place. And I really honestly believed that I would never, ever really enjoy life again. Life was something to get through. I get through every day because I had a son, and so I wasn't going to do anything silly. I was going to stay and stay here and get through life. Um, but every day was like, oh, I got through it. Thank fuck for that. I got through a day. I never thought the the, the joy that I've experienced since finding this understanding and having my insights was available to me, and and the fact that it is is just wonderful you know it's just given me my life back it's given me love back it's it stopped me being so you know scared of life I live life I'm not scared of it um as it, again I said I, I allow myself vulnerability it's it, the only thing I was ever really scared of was my own thinking so once you understand thought you don't have to be scared of your own thinking now are there areas where I can still get some sticky thinking? Of course. Of course there is. Again, the human condition. But am I able to observe it differently? Am I able to come out of it? Yes, of course. And and my worst day now is 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 no comparison to my worst day eight or nine years ago. 10 years ago definitely like it's nothing it's like phew, yeah I can cope that day the the days back then were dark it, 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 you know it I, it doesn't even compare so my issue was mental health and I guess that coming out of that and then and seeing the power of of, of looking in this direction and then training to teach this and then sharing it and seeing other people wake up is just such a gift. And again, that is, is why Gemini wanted to share this with as many people as possible. And, and we have the audience here to do that. So, you know, just, 
just play with it. You know, it doesn't have to be a serious thing. You can just begin to explore it for yourself and just just challenge yourself a little. Just just kind of pick a, pick a little bit at yourself, at your beliefs, at your thoughts. Because it's so amazing when you do. Much more richness doing that than there is a, any richness in the world. So, yeah, it's uh, it was perfect, Gem. And again, I rambled on. <laughs> no, you didn't at all. It's always, always perfect. But it's just one of the one of the things that always gets me is like, uh, let me try and mm, I don't know how to put this. Um, is I think all of m- most of my beliefs were sort of I believed them or they were sort of environmentally affected me from quite a young age so I was a young child so I sort of grew up believing these things that I now don't believe but I spent most of my life probably not planning certain things because of of these things and I I thought you know never going to get married never going to have children and I thought that up until about three or four years ago um hopefully not too late now but it's just you know it's just kind of I didn't realize how much those beliefs affected me and I didn't know that I could even think about the possibilities of doing certain things and now it's like yeah like pressing the reset button it's like I've got a a fresh a fresh life and the things that I believed before they they don't exist well, they do exist, but I don't. I don't believe them. Yeah, I'd say they probably don't exist if you don't believe them, because any limitation is a limitation with our minds from thought. You know, when you work with anybody, or when you speak to anybody, it's with the, in this understanding, and you unpick it, they, they begin to see. Well, ah, okay, so that limitation was was made of thought. Yeah, of course it was. Me thinking I can't do A, B or C is made of thought. Absolutely. Me thinking that life is going to look like this because I've made it up in my mind that it's going to look like that is made of thought. Absolutely, 100%. So when you see that, it kind of deletes so much that isn't true that suddenly, instead of going for a very kind of, if we've got bandwidth, suddenly you've got this narrow, you've got, you've got this narrow bandwidth of life and life looks like it's going to be a certain way, and that's all you see. And then suddenly the principles come in, and that bandwidth just expands. And actually, if, we, if it can expand infinitely. So what we thought life would look like, what we thought was possible for us, actually changes. It just, there's so much more. It's not limited. The only limits are our minds. There isn't a limit. We are made of infinite creative potential. We have infinite creative potential. So, of course, anything is possible. Now, what the mind and the ego does like to do is put the limits on. So if you think of the mind and the ego and the the, the intellect and the ego, it will always work in comparisons and measurements and numbers. It loves it loves those things. OK, Um if you think about what we're talking about the, in the principles, the infinite energy of, of life, the truth of, of experience, which is which is this oneness, that has no limits and no boundaries. There are no measurements. There are no edges. It's just an expanse. There's just all that is and all that will ever be. So anything is possible within that. But everything can be limited within our minds. So again, it's it's we go back to those two states that I was talking about, the one where we're lost in thought and we're limited, and the one where it, where where we're expanded and and anything is possible, and we see thought for what it is. It's it's fleeting, it's passing. So again, it, it we're we can always see really where we are. Am I expanded? Am I contra- contracted? Am I feeling good? Am I feeling bad? You know, there's all these signposts of where I am 
and and what I what we used to take that for is where we were in our life. Well, that's not true. The signposts are actually telling us where we are in our state of mind, where we are in the energy that's coming through us, creating our experience. So we go a bit deeper. We begin to see, ah, I'm free from the world creating my experience. I'm coming back to a place where my experience is coming through me. And in that, I, I, can, I, I, I have so many possibilities. I'm not limited. Now, we're always going to limit ourselves again. We always put the disclaimers in with this, you know, with all of it. It's, of course, we see it. It's expansive. It's amazing. But absolutely, do we get caught in thought and, and it looks different? Yes. So two states of being. I, I've got a friend that's a teacher and she she says, um, uh, we have to, yeah, we have two ways of experiencing life. One is seeing that thought is true. And the other is seeing that it's not. And both are gifts. So we don't want to make being lost in our thinking and caught up wrong. We want to just see it as it is. It's just the moment of us suffering from the human condition. And we don't want to make the the, the expansion, the feeling of being at one and, and infinite and at peace, the only right thing. Because it isn't. You know, we, we get, we're here to have all the experiences. We're here to have all the feelings. Now, of course, is it, do I prefer the expansive feeling? Absolutely. Am I also going to have the contracted feeling? Absolutely. So the more comfortable I get with all of it, the more at ease I am in my experience in life, the more comfortable I am with what life is offering me in that moment. Okay, so we come back to, I think I, I spoke about this a couple of weeks ago, where... Um, accept this moment as if you had chosen it so then you've got much less potential for suffering accept this world as if you had chosen to be here on this planet at this time because then there is less chance of suffering because what we're doing then we're showing up and saying okay this is exactly how it's supposed to be there isn't that resistance there isn't that that kind of that 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 place where we contract because We've made up an idea that it's not supposed to be like this and we create more suffering for ourselves. It's almost like we, we, we cut, we're cutting the loop. You know, that instead of getting on the loop of, of, of thought, feeling of negativity, we can, we can suddenly go, hold on, I know what's going on here. I'm really caught in my mind. I'm caught in my thinking. This isn't true. And we can step back and we, can, we, you know, we cut it and we're, we're free again. So all roads and the principles lead to more freedom. And that is ultimately um, really what we're all looking for. We're all looking for that. We're all looking for the happiness and the love and the peace and, and all the things that we think we want in the world that already exist within us. And again, I don't want to take away that we don't want things in life. Of course we do. Of course we want to have love and happiness and joy and all those we don't want to discount the experience of life i don't want to walk around going um having a really beautiful amazing experience and, and dulling it by going well i know this is just thought i want to really experience that as if it's real where the principles really come in into their own is is when we're having those experiences that maybe are a little more unhelpful because we've got something to fall back on, something, a, a system that shows us what's really happening. So again, it's like, if, if anything, I guess I, I, I experience life more fully with the, knowing the principles than I did before. Now that may be because my mind is more at ease and, 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 I, and I'm, I'm happier, but I, I also think it's because I don't try and analyze the good times. I don't try and think about why they're good. I know it's good because it's coming from me, but I want to live in the illusion that it's the beach and the sunset and the pina colada. You know, I'm not going to sit there and go, oh, it's none of these things. So it, it's the principles will come in when you need them. The insights will come when you need them. To be honest, most of my insights have come when I've probably been in a bad place. Um, and, and that's fine. You know, it's it's the compression sometimes creates the crack where the light gets in um you know 
a lot of the time it's when we go through the dark times that it can be so powerful that the, the, the crack comes, the crack in the ego, the crack in the character, the crack in the self comes. And suddenly there's like, oh, I, I'm not sure that all of this is true. That there, there, There's something maybe more to see about this experience. And, and in that we can kind of really open up and start to explore. So, yeah, it's uh, a lot of people come to me. Some come because they just want to have, you know, they've heard about it and they they want to talk about it and find out more. But a lot because they've they've been in a dark place or having a tough time. Um, and, and it's really interesting. I see my tough time now as a gift too because it led me to this understanding. It led me to all the awakenings that I've had from it. Um, and, and most of the people that I know that I work with or that have seen this for themselves will probably say the same thing. So I'm going to hand back over to Jen. Yeah, just to agree with what you're saying, like it's, I felt a bit teary then, but it's honestly the best thing that's ever happened to me. And if, um, yeah, I wouldn't have met you otherwise. And just this whole journey has just been so amazing. Um, thank you for everything. And it's so nice to be able to share with other people. And I, Sometimes I forget that it's recorded and everyone's gonna gonna know some things <laughs> about me that maybe I didn't want them to know. But fuck it, you know, who, who cares? It's okay. It's all okay. It is because it doesn't it doesn't matter. Yeah. But it's it's so interesting. Our, our mind is so powerful, but we let it sort of we allow it to run away with us and to connect with things that to try and sort of make sense. But when we think about it somebody can think about a past memory and have a panic attack they have physical reactions they get hot they get sweaty you know all sorts of things can happen and that just shows how powerful it is but if you if you can not use it but not if it can do that what else can it do and it's yeah. it's so freeing to know that you know it's I think I, I never felt that, okay, I'm going to feel amazing. Um, I just thought, I'm just going to feel. And now everything I feel I'm grateful for because I'm not trying to change anything. And I know that sometimes if I don't feel a certain way, I won't be able to feel another way. Like I, I believe life's about the contrast. And I'm, I used to look back in my life and think, oh, I wish that didn't happen or you know, if only that had been different, but I would never change a second of anything now. And I'm so grateful for everything because I know it brought me right here. And here is all that exists. But before I was, yeah, quite victim mentality, like why me, scared of relationships, things like that. And now that that was a an outfit I chose to wear, whether I'd been told it or whether I believed it. But that's, they're not my clothes. And it's nice to just wear what I want basically and do do whatever I want without thinking oh I can't I can't do that because all of those thoughts and beliefs whether they were self-taught or taught from others it, I never knew that that couldn't be real and you taught me that and it's when you believe certain things for such a long time it's because I'm, I'm finding it now every day with things, but it's like, oh, wow, actually, that, that would be all right with, for you, Jem. <laughs> Whereas before I wouldn't even, it was just like an, a non-entertaining subject. And I, I thought I was okay with that, but I wasn't. But I didn't realise that until now. Oh, yeah, beautiful points again, honestly. Really, really good. For you, like that, that just not, tr like what I really heard what you said there was at the beginning which was I don't try and change my feelings anymore like, oh wow like for, for for people like you and me that really feel things and still do it's I used to waste so much time time trying to change my feeling trying to manage my feeling not wanting a feeling and to be okay with how you feel that's freedom again it, it really ties back in with the beginning of the call where I said we don't have to manage anything, you know. We don't, we don't try to to, to make things different. It, it's the world doesn't have to be different, but also our feelings don't have to be any different. We can just get really comfortable, even with the uncomfortable ones, because we know they will pass. So that's such a great point. Thank you, really. Thank you for mentioning that because at the time that 
we wasted before on that was just ridiculous and now it's it's nothing it's if all that feeling comes that feeling goes don't have to micromanage my experience or my feelings anymore they are what they are they're going to do what they do you know it, it it it's all fleeting and it's all perfect so yeah i really love that thank you and i guess we maybe should see as it's nearly nine if anyone has anything they'd like to say or any questions for us this evening yeah, I remember that Kipo did have a question last time and we said that we'd get him on first and he is here. So Brilliant. Your, your first dibs, if not, if anyone else has a question, just request to speak. And if you don't uh, want to ask, you can just message me and I can I can read it out. No problem. Don't be shy. It's been a nice, nice little group today. Isn't it lovely? Yeah, it is. We were saying earlier that like, when the people that are in as soon as they join, they stay for the whole time and it's usually an hour, an hour and a half and it's, yeah, just so grateful for for all of you. Thank you. Yeah, me too. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate you all showing up and, and, and what I love is that when we hear this, like Jem's heard it, I know she talks to other people about it. When you see it for yourself, um, you'll talk to other people about it. it, it it's, it's a really simple understanding. So, it's really beautiful to share with others. So it's like the ripple effect. So we're just going to, we're just throwing that stone in the water and the ripples are going out and we're just, and we don't know who this is going to touch. You know, it's, it's the unknown. Who knows where this is going to go? Um, but we're really excited to be sharing it with you. Oh, we have a request. Lovely. We have a Jamie. So... Welcome, Jamie. Thanks for being here. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Jamie. Can you talk? I can. I just wanted to say this is the um, first space that I've been on with you guys, and I just wanted to thank you for sharing and talking about everything. Um, it, it's been great. So I just wanted to say I appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for joining joining us and we hope you join us again and we really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Well, we can, if, if no one has anything, we can actually finish on the hour for the first time. <laughs> yeah, well, we've both had very, very long days. Yes. <laughs> um, oh, it's been lovely. It's been a lovely chat. I mean, the, the first sort of, few ones we had so many people asking questions and we kind of everything got a bit carried away at some points didn't it but yeah. now it seems that we only have questions if they're relevant which is quite nice um but yeah if anyone does have any anything they want to say or, or ask just now if not me and moles are going to bed <laughs> separately <laughs> oh damn <laughs> One Bitcoin. I could do the cuddle. <laughs> oh, me too, actually. Me too. Oh, Keeper has requested. I'll let you deal with that. Oh, should we just speak to him again next week? <laughs> <laughs> Last week. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> That's really funny. Hi, we are nice, I promise. <laughs> Hi, Keeper. I will say I am going to read a poem at the end. I have got um, a poem to read, so. We've got an Alexander as well, so I'm going to um, accept him. But keep okay. going. Go, if you her. unmute yourself, you, you'll be able to speak. Lovely. Can you hear me now? Yay! Yes, thank you. <laughs> well, I just, uh, now I, this is my fourth space, I think. And uh, I'm really, really enjoying to be with you guys and uh, it has helped me a lot last three weeks and I have so much confidence in you both that uh, this is going to be very famous it's going to grow more and more and you're going to touch Aww. lives you know oh thank you that's a lovely thing for you to come on to say and I'm so happy that it's really helped you so much and you know as we said if it helps one person amazing that's enough and if it helps a hundred people amazing that's enough so whoever it's meant whoever's meant to hear it will hear it but thank you for saying that 
Thank you so Thank much. You, Thank That's you. That's really lovely. And the fact that you've waited twice to tell us about <laughs> it is even more beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting if somebody... You can come back next time. <laughs> I was waiting if somebody has something to say. Important, you know, you may have a rough day and so on and a rough week. Even yeah. I, I'm going through some things, but, you know, uh, this kind of conversation, listening to you guys, it will really help a lot, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Keith. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It. Love you guys. Thank, Thank you. Love you, you too. Love you. And hi, Alexandra. Uh, hey, what's up, Jim? Hopefully it's not too loud in the background. No, you're all good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks, both of you, for hosting this space, no. Jim and Malls. No, no. Ah, oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, I followed Jim because she oh says crypto and is sarcastic. Wow. So, wow. Uh, wow. I enjoy that. So smalls. Yeah. <laughs> and and some smart people <laughs> left over in the world. So, <laughs> I appreciate that. It's good for you, Kim. Thank you, Alexandra. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to say, like, I create content on crypto and stuff. And no matter a tough time, uh, I need to go out and take a walk and look at nature. I don't mind it isn't for me. That's all I got yeah. to say. Perfect. Again, whatever works for you. Again, that, you know, when we talked about what comes through you to do is perfect. So if nature, your nature is always wonderful to walk in, but yeah, if that, that helps anyone else. You know, it's, yeah, it's that, that experience will, from the point of view of the principles, that experience will still come from you. So I'm sure it's it, just to touch on that a little bit is that I love walking in nature and there's times it makes me feel so connected and there's times where I'm not, I don't feel it because I might be really caught in my head. Um, so, so again, we begin okay, to yeah. just want to create, make this the, inside out experience rather than the outside in um but it, yeah it, again it, it's we, we can always walk by the sea or walk by like, some trees and have yeah. a very very lovely experience it helps me because i step out of the world i'm focused in of work you know yeah content i step away from my environment to a different one so that's why i like it yeah it's perfect I've, i'm near the sea so I would walk along the seafront and have the same thing, but but there are times where I'm too caught up to to really drop out, um, and there's times where I will drop out really easily. So yeah, it's true thank too. You. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you both for having it. And, uh, thanks for letting thank me you speak. For speaking. Thank you. Oh, hi, Gems. Hello. <laughs> thank you very much for, for speaking. And we got three thank yous instead of three questions. So. I know. We're doing really well now. <laughs> oh, the, I'm going to pay them after the, after the call. So. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, did you have something lovely to read then? I do. And, and it kind of fits very perfectly with what we've been talking about tonight. It's a poem by my favourite poet. His name is Rumi. And it's called The Guest House. And it says, This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival. A joy, a depression, a meanness. Some, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if there are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house, empty of its furniture, Still treat each guest honourably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice. Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes, because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. That's beautiful. <laughs> That's lovely. Yeah, I'll um, I will um, add it to the unminding chat, and I will add it on Twitter as well because it is a really beautiful poem. Yeah, I, w I need to hear that again. I think I'll read it when when we get off the call. Okay. Um, yeah, it's like a. You want me to read it again? Yeah. Do you mind? No, of course not. Thank you. Okay. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. 
even if there are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honourably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice. Meet them all at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. Yeah, that's fucking amazing. <laughs> that hit me. I'm going to read it again when I get off the call anyway. But yeah, that's, that's one of those ones that's going in the yeah, it's a daily or weekly lovely. read. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's just amazing. Absolutely amazing. But um, yeah, thank you, everyone. I'll let Jem do the last little bit. But thank you all. I, I, I love sharing with you all. And I'm so grateful for everybody that shows up. Yeah, thank you so much, everybody. I've just um, shared uh, the article that Moles has written about what we're planning on doing. We are starting, uh, well, I say a proper podcast, but not on Spaces. So we've got all of our recordings, but they're kind of all over the place on SoundCloud and Twitter. So we're just going to make it more professional, make it more accessible for everybody. So, yeah, website and podcast starting soon. And... Um, all of the details are in the link that I've just posted, but it's pinned to, to Moles' Twitter. Now, we have a, a Telegram group, so you're obviously more than welcome to join that. There's always someone in there to chat. And what we want to do is we just want to share uh, with you guys, and then hopefully you'll share with other people. So if there's anything that has sort of resonated with you tonight, we'd be really grateful if you would share and sort of make more people aware about what we're doing. Um we do do this for free and we've been very uh, lucky to have some lovely donations this week from different NFT projects and we're sponsored by Cope. So anybody that would like to help us, please feel free to look at the article and send anything over to us. We're, um, this is a, I'd say a lifetime, long, long term <laughs> thing. It's, it's, I don't think I've ever felt as passionate about anything in my life because it's changed my life so much. And, um moles i think you're in it till the end until <laughs> until until we're not on this earth so yeah just we're just grateful for you to be here and um any subjects or anything you want us to cover just message us in the week and we're always here for you yeah thank you jens for being a lovely co-host thank you for Cecil for being back up and yet love you all and hopefully see you next thursday and if you need us we're always around yeah, lots of love, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.